Girl, where do I start? <laughs> where where do I start? How do I begin? Um, it, it, <laughs> is this how we look? Right. And and not necessarily women, but just people in general. Is this how we look when we the facts are right in front of us? And instead of making a logical decision based off the facts that are right in front of us, we decide to continue to paint the narrative that we prefer to see. Is that what that is? Yes. Cognitive dissonance. That is the phrase. The that is what we would need to call this episode cognitive dissonance because, girl, the story, the facts, okay, the T is right in front of you, and yet you are continuing to paint a narrative to yourself for yourself that is contrary, okay. (laughs) <laughs> quite contrary to what is actually happening in real life. Anyway, hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle. This is the Belle Perspective. We are here to talk about the Never Ever Mets, y'all. We are here. This is season one, episode eight. Those tables be turning. Girl, we back where we left off. This is Shay confronting Josh about him trying to sneak Alexis, who has been voted off the show, sneak her somewhere in the hallway or wherever to get his rocks off. Now, do I believe what Alexis said? I believe every single word. And the reason why I believe that is one, the nigga had a baby on her. Okay. He already had a baby. So he's already got a wandering peen. Okay. One, two, the way that they narrate the, what happened. And then they show the video footage to coincide with the narration of what potentially could have happened. Girl, it fits. I don't know if y'all saw it, but I saw Josh go to a closet door and try to jangle the handle and then decided that, no, the closet isn't going to work. Let's go somewhere else. That's literally what it looked like in the video footage, okay? Why would, if Shay's in the bed asleep, why do you need to go into a closet? And Alexis is standing behind him as if waiting for him to open the door so they can go in together. What exactly would happen in a closet with the two of you? Huh? Okay. (laughs) Okay, I said, Shay, go ahead. You stand, you standing ten toes down in your foolishness. Let me tell you something. I will be reading Shay for filth because I, you know, and I don't like talking about people's looks or anything like that. But I, it's it's on the day. The way she carried on and cut up, girl, it's on the day. I got something for everybody, y'all. Let's get into it. Okay, so Josh is basically got her back into his trap. Okay. Because initially, Shay was going off. Don't lie to me, Josh. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Da, 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 da. Josh just sat there, waited it out, almost as if this is what she does. He's just going to wait till the storm passes, and then he's going to start coaxing her back into it. You're going to let these hoes and these bitches that you don't even know come tell you about what we got. You said, you and I have been talking about how we the best couple in the house. I said, girl, I know you fucking lying to me. See, that's the problem with Shay. She want to be... She she think don't she don't want to be wrong. She want she don't want to be made to look a fool, right? But not realizing that literally he's making you look the fool right now, girl. 12 years went by and the nigga ain't never come to see your ass, okay? We about to get into it. We about to get into it. So anyway, so here go Josh, boosting her head up, right? Gassing her up. You know, we the best couple in the house. We ain't had no issues. How you gonna let these bitches and hoes? Which I had a problem with him calling Alexis and Diamond bitches and hoes. Like, what the fuck wrong with you? That don't call no woman no bitch and no hoe, whether you like them or not. I don't care if I don't like that bitch or not, okay? And I say that because I'm a woman. But don't you call her no bitch. I told that to my man. I was like, if I call a woman a bitch, I call her a bitch. You don't call her no bitch. It's like the N-word. Don't you say that shit, Okay. So him calling Diamond and Alexis bitches and hoes, I said, oh, y'all, you got a lot of mouth for somebody who, wow. Anyway, so I, again, ultimately, Shay was like, I don't know Diamond. I don't know Alexis, but I know Josh. But do you, girl? You you just met this nigga maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, you've been talking to him on the phone, but girl, you don't know him. And again, baby, okay. A three-year-old, four-year-old baby that you didn't know nothing about. So clearly you don't know him at all, all right? But anyway, so she says she trusts him more. Now, I want to put a little asterisk right here where she says she trusts Josh more than she trusts Alexis and Diamond, okay? So I do want to highlight that last episode, she said I got trust issues probably about 12, 13 times. We're going to get back to it, though. All right, so later on that day, we see Greg and Josh talking about how Josh is making plans to get matching tattoos with Shay. 
I said after 12 years, that's the most you can do is a matching tattoo. <laughs> Josh ain't about shit. And let me tell you something. I can't stand a nigga whose teeth is fucked up. His teeth are a mess, okay? A mess, girl. But anyway, we're going to keep on moving. So Millie is standing outside watching Greg and Josh talk. And Millie is in the room with Diamond and Shay. And yeah, Diamond and Shay. So they're all now Shay back on her bullshit again, right? You know, she, we the best couple in the house. I ain't gonna let these bitches get me fucked up. I ain't gonna let them bother me and my man because we, you know, we, eh, 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 you know, right? So she was like, oh, Diamond, exactly. Why did Alexis tell you what she said? Now, here go Diamond stuttering and bumbling, fumbling and bumbling. It's kind of like, okay, Diamond, now girl, stand 10 toes down. You don't want to got it, got your ass up in this shit. But now you stumbling, fumbling and bumbling when you need to deliver the news. So Alexis was like, you know, he tried her, da, 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 da. And Shay was like, I don't know why Alexis didn't come tell me. She got my phone number, et cetera. I said, girl, the reason why Alexis probably ain't tell you is because why the fuck would she tell you, stupid? She was trying to fuck on your man. Girl, that's dumb. <laughs> she was trying to fuck on your man. And also, you will probably turn on her like you turned on Diamond. So why the fuck would she do that? Okay, so anyway, we, we um, I was looking at Shay like, girl, I see why Josh was able to do what the fuck he was doing. Okay, so we get, Tarana get there. She is got a whole setup for them. They're about to play the game called Hot Seat. Girl, this game. I said, y'all really want people to be, the couples to be pitted against each other. They really don't need to be pitted. They need to be focusing inward to fix all of their shit. Because when I tell you there's holes in every last one of these goddamn relationships, it's a mess. It's a mess, okay? So first person, two first couple in the hot seat, Jody and nephew Aaron. Girl, why do we even continue to waste our time? Girl, when I tell you that relationship expert was like, oh hell no. Nah. You can see her face. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get into that. I'm getting too, I'm getting ahead of myself. But that little was like, oh uh-uh. Immediately, you can immediately see her body language in her face. Like, nah, this bitch is, is not for real. Okay. Anyway, so very uncomfortable interaction. I was holding my breath and feeling highly embarrassed for nephew Aaron, okay? Jody wants to sit down. This is her good side. He playing around like, okay, say please. She looking at him like disgusted. <laughs> please. I was like, okay, it's one thing to not be attracted to him. But girl, do you got to treat him like dog crap? Girl, what is your problem? He is nice to you. And my issue with Jody is the fact that She's one of those girls that have been hurt, okay? And I don't want to take that away from her. I understand that she's a survivor. I understand that she has a lot of trauma that she's dealing with. And this is some of the ways that she's used to cope to get through that. And I want to acknowledge that. I want to give my heart and my kudos to her. But she has taken on this persona that feels like it's been influenced by if I take on this persona of being like a man, right? If I if I come off tough, if I come off like I don't care about nothing, if I come off like yes, it is what it is, you know, whatever, huh? You know, that kind of thing. I guess this is her personality and it's so unattractive on her. And I'm not saying that I feel like, oh, you need to bask in your femininity. I don't believe in that bullshit either. But I do feel like this is a persona that she has taken on in order to protect herself. Now I might be <laughs> I might be diagnosing this girl, but there's something about her personality that is very inauthentic to me. Anyway, so they asking questions, are you physically attracted to each other? Here go nephew. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here she go. Yes. Oh, girl. Okay. <laughs> okay, girl. Okay. Okay. Then she goes into talking about marriage is a business decision and all this other stuff. And Aaron thinks that marriage is a business decision as well. But do you really? Nephew, nephew gives me that he's like a hopeless romantic. I don't know if he really believes that. I just, and Greg in a confessional says, I feel like I can't tell what nephew really wants. I think he's just going along to get along with Jody. And I agree. I just, I'm so annoyed and it, can we please, can we please get them off? Cause I'm tired. It's quite literally obvious. Okay. Anyway, we get Josh and Shay. Now I, I Josh and Shay. Okay. <laughs> Shay sat her ass up in her imaginary throne. Girl, did y'all see the arrogance seething out of Shay? I said, girl, you got a nigga that you can't even introduce your mama to. Talking about it's an internet relationship, but you finna sit up here proud and go to war over some nigga you can't even introduce your mama to? And who had a baby on you? Girl, who took 12 years to come see you, girl? The way that I would have read her ass. But see, you can't read nobody because all of y'all asses in the same damn in the same damn situation. So what the fuck y'all talking about? Girl, 
It's the pot calling, all right? And here she go, again, sitting down in her arrogance, girl, her little pretend imaginary throne, like, yeah, bring it on, what y'all got? Me and my man, good. Me and my man, my man, my man, we good. And him sitting up there with them fucked up ass teeth, goddamn, looking like a picket fence in his damn mouth. I was like, good God almighty. He opened his mouth all the way. I was like, what the fuck is that? What is going on in there? Girl, it's foreign life forms in his mouth, girl, what the fuck? Girl, anyway, so he's sitting there. And I did not like the little look on his face. It was just kind of like Shay is his attack dog. I can't explain it. Anyway, let's continue. All right, let's move on. The question is, Shay, do you trust Josh? I also didn't like how Shay was doing all the talking on her imaginary throne. Let me tell you something. Queens have messengers. Queens don't have to do all the talking. Queens already know. What's understood is understood. Queens don't got to do all this. Girl, you was looking like a court gesture sitting up on that thing looking real stupid. Girl, the way I would have read her ass, even, girl, anyway, okay. So she turns to Josh and was like, do I trust you? Yeah, I trust you. Bitch, no, you don't. Because later on in the episode, you was like, you know, my trust issues, because you know, I don't trust people, because you know, I don't trust people. I don't trust people. Girl, you said it like 30 times in last week's episode and this week as well. You stopped this week because you didn't want to make, you didn't want to out yourself. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. And again, we find out that her mama don't know about this man because she calls it an internet relationship girl i said oh goddamn i'll be i'll be good and goddamn but i embarrass myself on national tv for some nigga that i can't even introduce my mama for okay and, and who got a baby on me girl uh -uh. anyway moving on we got chris and sandia child just as equally fucked up all right they are working on the communication what well, the question is how's communication going chris says i'll let sandia answer that I was looking at Sandia like, girl, stand up, girl. Bitch, stand up. Girl, I'm so sick of her being so docile and shit. Girl, I'm sick of this. This is not cute, girl. This is not cute. Anyway, so Chris says the solution for his communication is to spend more time with her and, you know, really try to make time for the things, uh, you know, being around Sandia. Toronto was like, boy, what the hell do you do for a living? Because you act like you always got so much work to do. And he was like, I'm an entrepreneur. And I don't know how the conversation got to it, but he was like, I would never spend a lot of time on no woman <laughs> until she shows me she's worth it. We find out that he had been in an eight year relationship. When I tell you the way he got so emotional, Mr. King of I'm not emotional girl, he's emotionally stunted is what it is. When I tell you this man got so emotional and was like, I wasn't in a relationship eight years ago. I was in an eight year relationship. Girl, he was a big mad girl. I was like, oh, not the man who talking about he can't, you know, he don't process emotions, getting emotional, baby. You know, anger is emotion. You know, bitterness is an emotion. You know, resentment is an emotion. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he then gets into talking about how he feels like women are bad decision makers. Again, like I said in my last video, girl, the only women who making bad decisions is the bitches that's dating your ass, okay? And when I say bitches, I don't mean bitches like Josh was saying, okay? I mean bitches like heifers. The only women who's making bad decisions are the women that are signing up to be with you, Sandia, okay? Again, girl. So they asking Toronto, like, all right, uh, Sandia, you can you can get off the mute challenge, girl. Hello? What do you have to say about this? She was like, I, I didn't I not know i have so many things in going on in my head that i do not know okay so can you at least communicate some of those things because you're claiming that chris does not know how to communicate but i'm looking it's looking like you don't know how to communicate either girl what's going on what do you think about this right she just has so many things in her head the next question was you know how do you feel being controlled by a man now you know that was diamond and uncle aaron's messy ass question now here go jody what bitch punch her in her face. i do not like jody I don't like Jody. I don't like Shay and her tick. <laughs> Let me be. I ain't going to do it. 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 I don't like Shay. I don't like none of them Josh and all that shit in his mouth, girl. Oh, yikes. Please. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, again, Chris doesn't think women are good decision makers. He thinks that they're emotional. And, again, Sandy is just sitting up there looking stupid. Okay. So here go Taronda going off and preaching at him. And I wanted to be like, Taronda, he is not the person to do that. He, if you give him that, he is going to do exactly what he did in a confessional. You know, I was, I'm not surprised that Taronda did what she did. Cause you know, she's a woman and she's emotional. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would not have given him anything. Don't give him shit. If that's how you feel. All right, nigga. Good luck. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> 
and can't go on. Like, that's all you need to do. Like, don't give him nothing. Don't preach at him. Don't do nothing. Let this motherfucker stay where the fuck he at. He happy being bitter, angry, all the things that they be trying to say black women are bitter, angry, resentful, all of those things, vindictive, all of the things that Chris got going on. Let him be that in his, in his own at his own self and let Cindia walk off with his ass. I was looking at Cindia like, girl, <laughs> girl, <laughs> if you like it, I love it, girl. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, Millie and Greg have an opportunity to sit down. Millie is concerned about Greg being a womanizer. I got my good eye on Greg and Millie, honestly, to be, to, to, to be real, real with you. Greg is a womanizer. I still feel like he's a womanizer. It's only been two weeks, girl. As soon as he got these doors out these four walls, girl, who the hell is he going to be, girl? Because it took him three years to come see your ass. Badly, okay? So he said, I'm serious about her. I want to protect her, da 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 I said, if you were really serious, you it wouldn't have took you no show to get on here and be trying to see this girl. So, But, but whatever. So then Diamond and Uncle Aaron get in the hot seat. I said, ooh, child, karma come up. And, see, Diamond, you should have minded your business, okay? Uncle, you should have minded your goddamn business. Y'all asses was over there trying to be the, the, the wise couple. Wasn't doing nothing but spreading bullshit. That's what y'all was doing. And the thing about Uncle Aaron that really grinds my gears is that he thinks just because he's older that he got wisdom. He really don't, okay? He really don't because he over there proposing to other people just like, damn, Josh dropping off dick and getting other people pregnant. Girl, please, girl. So one of the questions is, are you jealous of the youth? Young question. I said, Shay, girl, you might want to pipe down with talking about people, people being old, girl. You gonna want to hope and wish you get old. Okay, and if Josh don't run your ass through the ground, okay, I say, girl, that's dumb. I think being, I think when people try to get back at you by saying jealous or saying that, oh, they're they're coming at me because they're just jealous. I think that is such a late, old, tired ass read. Like it's so tired, so through, so late, girl. You think they the best thing out of everything that happened? The best thing you can come up with is jealousy, girl. On a nigga who, again, I ain't gonna forget it because niggas was forgetting shit on this whole goddamn episode. Bitch, I'm not finna let you forget it, girl. The nigga had a baby on your ass. That baby three years old. So, girl, nobody is jealous, okay? But also, ain't nobody, <laughs> don't nobody want Diamond and um, Uncle Aaron relationship neither, okay? That recycled ring he about to give to her. Girl, anyway, we, none of this shit. Don't, don't be trying to compare your relationship to nobody and talk about you the best and all. Girl, please. Anyway, so, we, we, um, yeah, I wrote down. I said, baby, this is what happened when you don't mind your business. But when I tell you the cast ganged up on their ass, they got, you was all in everybody business. Nephew Aaron was like, okay, so you can, so you can agree that just because you don't see it happening in their relationship doesn't mean that it's not happening. I said, again, nephew Aaron, you absolutely right. But we all know, just like you said in an episode before that you can see that Jody ain't feeling you. You literally said it. So now you're rewriting a story to tell yourself that she do to hang on for whatever reason. Girl, I said, baby, cognitive dissonance left and right. Left and right. Shay, your ass over here knowing this motherfucker is lying to you. You knew he was lying to you. If Shay trusted her man like she says she does, she wouldn't have gone off the deep end like she did. She would have never. She would have been like, that's bullshit. I don't believe that. No, she believed it. She knew he was lying. When he was looking at her dead in the eye, he, he could barely look at her in the eye. She knew he was lying. I said, Shay, you know the story. You know what it is, but you're going to, for your own narrative, okay? Sandia, this nigga just told you that he ain't going to invest no time in a woman unless he feels like you're good enough. Huh? So you're going to forever be working to try to be good enough for this nigga. For him to validate your feelings? Girl, cognitive dissonance. Okay, Diamond, this nigga proposed to somebody else and the only reason why he ain't with her. It's because she said no. Girl, <laughs> cognitive dissonance, child. It's got, it got to be that. Anyway, in the confessional, Greg does an impersonation of Uncle Aaron. And girl, the shit was hilarious, girl. So damn funny. Diamond brings up, you know, the fact that she's got, Shay has trust issues. Because it's been back and forth. There's back and forth about how that nobody sees that Diamond is saying that she loves Uncle Aaron and all this other stuff, right? So... Diamond mentioned Shay's trust issues. Shay goes berserk. Don't be talking about me like you think you know me and da 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 da. I was like, girl, you literally told her. She was like, real talk. I never told you about my trust issues. Bitch, you did. You did. 
You did. I heard her. You told her at least 12 times. And quiet as it kept, you told a confessional at least 13. Girl, I heard you. I got trust issues. I got trust issues. I got trust issues. I got trust issues. Yes, I don't trust people like that. You know, I don't trust people like that. I don't trust people like that. But now all of a sudden, you ain't never tell Dami you, you got trust issues. Okay, girl, please. And you also said you don't trust J Josh either. You said that last episode. Girl, please don't play with girl. Anyway, so I, I again, I went, I had to go back to all the episodes, and I was like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, you sat there and you said you got trust issues, and then there go Josh sitting there looking like um like the Cheshire Cat, just <laughs> get her, get her, Shay. That's how he was looking. Shay doing all the arguing, fussing and fighting, and he just sitting there. Girl, I'll be a good. Anyway, whatever. He go Shay. They weird. They old. They mad and they miserable. Girl, that's what that's what you think this is, girl. Okay, <laughs> that's what you think it is. Now she might be messy, but bitch, jealous. I don't think so. See what I'm saying? Y'all be overreaching. That's why. I don't, that's why I don't listen when people be talking about. Oh, she just jealous. Oh, they just jealous. No, no. That's such a lazy, tired. Like you're not even really looking at the scenario to even understand what's actually happening. You just throwing out the word jealousy because that's the easiest thing to reach for. Girl, bye. Anyway, so. Again, Shay calling, going around the house saying that they old and Diamond puss don't get wet. I said, bitch, the way Diamond handled that better than I would, because I sure would have been like, oh, and you mean the nigga who done dropped, I guess that the bitch that I had done dropped some dick off with, I guess that shit was wet. Huh? I bet I, I bet her puss was wet. The way I would have been riding now, oh, what, what y'all doing for the baby for his birthday? Huh? What y'all doing for the baby for his birthday? Oh, is everybody coming? The baby mama too? What's going on? Have you met the baby mama? Bitch, the way I would have been getting Shay together. Girl, I'm going to get your ass up out of my face. Yuck. Anyway, so Josh calms her down and here she go again. You know, I got trust issues. I said, bitch, <laughs> I'm not fucking with Shay, girl. Go away from me with this. We do see that Greg and Millie go to the boom boom room. Millie say she want to do a little touch and a little kiss and a little something, you know, a little something, something. I said, girl, <laughs> proceed with caution, girl, but whatever. Proceed with caution. Anyway, they have it set up so they're going to be meeting with the relationship experts because they're going to be wrapping up the show pretty soon. I think they've been in the house for maybe two weeks. Feels like longer, but you know. So, Josh and Shay walk up with a hand holding and all this other stuff. I said, this is so performative. These motherfuckers have been dating, quote unquote, dating for 12 years. Y'all are not telling people about this damn baby. Y'all are not talking about that. Y'all just brushing up on the rug, trying to make y'all seem like y'all the perfect couple. Shay sitting down in her imaginary, her imaginary chair, her imaginary throne, like she the baddest bitch, and they got it together. She was like, you know, I really, I was angry and I was cutting him off and cussing him out and blocking him and everything. I don't understand why the therapist wasn't asking why. What what led you to this this much anger? Because that nigga was cheating on her and lying on her and ducking and dodging and doing some old shiesty shit. And she was sick of it. That's what it was. But she don't want to say all that. Anyway, here go the relationship expert, which I, again, I'm side on her ass too because she's not asking deep enough, uh, deep enough questions for me. Or maybe, you know, I guess she said they ain't paying her enough, okay, to be asking all them deep ass questions, girl. You got to check check me on your HMO, girl. Check me on your PPO plan, girl, because I ain't fucking around with no free ass. Th this is free, girl. I'm going to give y'all that, that half-ass shit because they ain't paying me for real, for real. I said, I know that's right, girl. Okay. Anyway, so the, the a relationship expert basically was like, okay, kudos to you, Mazel Top. Y'all doing good. Y'all doing good. I said, girl, please. <laughs> girl, please. Anyway. So we see Amari, who is Diamond's daughter, come to visit and basically do a one over one two with with Uncle Aaron, girl. Why the fuck Uncle Aaron got six goddamn kids, girl? <sighs> That's a red flag for me. I like Amari. Now I don't understand how Amari go from asking all these realistic, real questions to all of a sudden liking her him and approving him. Proving of him. She was like, I don't think you're in love. This is all of a sudden. Y'all been together for five years. Why the hell did it, did it take you so long? I bet you she don't know nothing about him proposing to somebody else. Okay. Where are the dates? Why haven't you been taking her out on dates? Girl, asking all the right questions. All the right questions. And I don't know how the hell it ended up being where the daughter was like, you know, I see his intentions are pure. I said, girl, where? <laughs> I don't know if that was production. I don't know. Maybe she just saw her mama happy and was like, I, don't, I won't rain on my mama parade. But it's some bullshit. Maybe that's what it is. Because she was asking some real educated ass questions. And because those questions was educated and I know the answers was some bullshit, I don't see how she was able to get that stamp of approval on Uncle Aaron and her mama. But you know what? I guess so, child. Moving on. So, Kristen Sandia sit down with the relationship expert. And girl, 
here he go, eight year relationship, got him fucked up. You know, he it was basically family and the girl ended up leaving. So what I assess is he was in this eight year relationship with this woman and he was really hurt. And the way that he has been able to confront his feelings or comfort himself is going to those red pill, Kevin Samuels, fresh and fit, I hate bitches type of shows, them type of things. He went and was like, these bitches ain't shit. Let me find comfort in the red pill. That's literally what happened. Um, and he already was leaning towards that anyway, because the way that our, our society is, is uh, set up anyway, it has a proclivity to hate women anyway. But um, I think that's what happened. And he tells the expert that, you know, I'm, they both, again, they introduce themselves, and Dia Haitian, Chris Haitian, etc. And he says that I don't deal with emotions like that. I said, you act like emotions is a foreign concept. Emotions and how you feel love is ingrained in you as a human. So unless you're R2-D2, motherfucker, you got emotions, okay? I don't understand what the fuck you're... And quite as kept, I feel like R2-D2 was sensitive too. He was a nice little... He was a nice little robot. Had a little feeling and everything. Anyway, we're moving on. Moving on, moving on. So he said, I'm not sensitive like that. I said, the fuck you not? Because if you weren't sensitive, your ass wouldn't be holding on to this goddamn... Shh, shh, we was together for eight years. <laughs> all this harboring, all this anger, resentment, bitterness, regret, all of this... But you're not sensitive. Motherfucker, yes, you are. The fuck you are not, okay? Anyway, relationship expert basically says, you know, maybe there's some things y'all need to work out. Clearly, okay? Clearly. And again, Cindy is still sitting there just, yeah, that, that eight-year relationship really got him really messed up. It really hurt him. Girl, if you don't pack your motherfucking bags and get the fuck on, the nigga is not okay. All right, and he's going to treat you bad. He's going to play mind games with you. You're going to be the punching bag is what it is, okay? He basically said you're not good enough. He doesn't know of any woman that is good enough, and he's going to have you jump through hoops until he is tired. Good luck, girl, okay? If that's what you want, girl, if you like it, I love it, mama. All right, so we get a Jody and Aaron girl sitting down a relationship expert, and girl, it was in two seconds, the relationship expert was looking at Jody like, oh, hell no. Nah. Her body language was looking at her like, uh, uh-uh. uh here go Aaron there's a wall up I just don't know how deep and wide that wall is nigga you know what it is the relationship expert says you know so is it the fear of you failing is why you keep trying to reach out because there is no connection here and Aaron was like you know maybe so she also talks about and this is Jody that's talking oh you know the fact that when I met him I didn't like him trying to overly impress me when in the history of the world has any woman ever said I was turned off because he was overly trying to impress me? I said, girl, the I <laughs> say you don't like the man without saying you don't like. I mean, she literally is doing it. Like her body language, everything. Here go Aaron. You know, I was so intoxicated when I saw her. I was looking at him like, poor thing. You please. I can't even feel bad for him because it's that cognitive dissonance. Sir, you know what it is. You had that real conversation with Chris and Josh at the table. You know what it is, but you still playing around in our faces and in yours. Anyway, so when the expert says, how do you feel that she felt like it was awkward and she didn't like you overly impressing her? He says, you know, I feel sadness. Then she asked Jody, well, how do you feel about that? And she was like, well, basically my feelings aren't his feelings. So he gonna have to deal with that. I said, oh God, I'm so glad the expert was like, actually it does affect you. Actually it does matter. You should, you should care about that child. And we end with the expert saying, I want to talk to her. Here she go. Ooh, I'm in the hot seat. I'm always in trouble. No girl. I I, it's something about her that makes me want to punch her in the face. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And I'm trying to come up with the words to figure out why she irritates me so, but I haven't figured it out. It's a little bit of arrogance. It's that, again, that persona that she uses. And it's something else that really just makes me want to punch her because I'm sick of her. Anyway. Y'all get down in the comments, girl. I think I said everything I wanted to say. It was a lot going on. I hope we get a reunion. We need to get a reunion because the way this show, <laughs> I need to see what happens after. For real, for real. Anyway, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode. Don't forget to like this video before you leave. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.